Hey guys, Pim Master here. I'm here with Vato, and we're gonna talk about what is self-defense. We're training you guys how to use all these awesome moves, how to defend your life, how to protect yourself, how to win the UFC or whatever. But when can you use them? When can you use them legally and safely? And when are you gonna go to jail for using them? Yeah. A lot of people don't know the difference, and there's a very fine line, they don't know the difference between defending your life from imminent danger and just being a criminal. There's a fine line. And believe me, even if you are in the right, when you go to court, they're gonna try to make like you were in the wrong. They were gonna try to paint a picture of you like you were in the wrong. So you better have all your ducks in a row and you better be in the right. Because if you're not, even if it's like a really close call, you're going to jail. And then you're gonna get sued. So, yeah, because for me, I don't, I don't really know. Like, say I defend myself, and uh, could I use excessive force? I could probably get in trouble. Well, just the word excessive right there means you went too far. But how would I know that? Like, I'm just in the moment, I'm defending myself, I'm just, I'm just reacting. I could possibly go overboard and possibly use um, excessive force. Use excessive force. It could be that easy, so it, it's tricky. It can. It, there's a fine line, but I'll tell you. I'll tell you where the line is. Stopping the threat. If what you're doing is stopping the threat, even if it's putting five bullets in their chest and that's the only way to stop the threat, you're good. But if the threat is already stopped and they're unconscious and you throw one kick to their head more than you had to, now you're going to jail. So the whole thing revolves around stopping the threat. When you go to court, you can't say, you know, I was angry, I punched him in the face, I wanted to hurt him, I was trying to hurt him. You can't ever say that. You have to say, I had to stop the threat. And you do. And whatever stops that threat, then you're, you're legally, legally allowed to do it. If someone shoves you on the ground, right, that's a, that's a very aggressive move. They could have been trying to kill you. But then if they're walking away after, you can't go after them and hit them or hurt them or shoot them or whatever because they're no longer a threat, right? Even if somebody pulled out their gun and shot at you and missed, and it would have killed you if it, if it hit, and you turn, and they turned around and started walking away, and you shot him while he was walking away, you can't say, well, he shot at me first, you're going to jail. See, that's crazy. All, <laughs> all you can do, anything you do, revolves around stopping the threat. If you're driving, a car and there's a mob of people protesting and they're and they're stopping your car I say drive right through them. What? Yeah, because I've seen too many times where protesters and they start getting a gang and, and, a, and a riot mentality and you stop the car all of a sudden you're the bad guy and there's a couple hundred people there grabbing you out of your car and stomping you to death like Reginald Denny in the LA riots. So to me, stopping, my, stopping the threat would be driving through the crowd. And if I hurt someone, they could argue that I just ran over some innocent people. But I would rather go to court and fight that than end up waking up three weeks later in a coma with a 95 pound nurse turning me every two hours with a tracheostomy tube. I don't want to be in a coma. I don't want to be in a nursing home. I would rather always, always lean on the side of defending myself. I'd rather ask for forgiveness. I'd rather beg for, for I'd rather, I'd rather ask for forgiveness than permission, okay? I would rather be tried by 12 than carried by six. Well, what if uh, self-defense for helping somebody else? Say you see a couple arguing and the, the guy's getting physical with his girlfriend. I mean, what do you do? That's a tough one. What I would do in almost all situations that I came upon and they weren't actually mine firsthand, almost everyone, I would not get involved. I would call 911, I would video it, I would tell the guy to stop. 
And then if he turned on me and came towards me, I would defend my life. But I don't know what happened. She could have a gun. She could have, she could be crazy. She could have slapped him like five times before I got there. She could have a prison record for killing someone and he could be a he could be the nicest guy in the world. I don't know. You don't know the backside of any story when you get when you get up upon it. So risking your life or your or your time in prison, I say no. I say call 911 and start videoing and tell the guy to leave her alone. Now if it was something like you saw him grabbing her and he's about to stab her, yeah, imminent danger like that I might address. I might or I might not, not 100%. If someone's doing it to me or my loved one, without a doubt. But if I don't know those people, I don't know what's gonna happen. I could defend her life and kill him and then she could testify against me in court and say I started it, right? That happens all the time in domestic, uh, domestic abuse cases. So, when it's somebody else, I'm gonna always, always, always lean on the side of caution. I'll video, I'll 911, I'll say stop, but if it's me or my family, I'm jumping in right now, defending their life, and I'll worry about court later. Hmm. Well, what if someone uh, throws a drink in your face? That's a good one. If someone throws a drink in it your face, all the time. it does happen all the time. That's a very aggressive move, but but you're you're you're, you're not in imminent danger. You're not going to die by that drink. So for you to punch someone over throwing a drink in your face, I have a feeling you're going to go to jail for that one. So even though it'll make you very angry, and I think you should be able to punch the person in the face, I think legally you can't. So if someone throws a drink in your face, I would report them to the bouncer, or, or report them to the bartender or something, but you cannot go after someone that throws a drink in your face. Unless, unless they throw the drink in your face, and then they take another step forward. Because to me, Throwing a drink, drink in your face is a very aggressive move. Now if they're stepping towards you, your life's in danger now, I think. Now you're in imminent danger, so I would defend myself. But if they threw the drink in the face and walked away, you can't chase them down and kill them and start stabbing them in the back. That's not gonna look good in court, especially with all the video cameras out there. But what if like a, a 70 year old woman verbally threatened you and said she's gonna beat your ass. She verbally threatened me that she was going to attack you. So what do you do? Okay, I'll tell you what you do. <laughs> I don't know. Come if somebody's going to attack you, and for you to be in fear for your life and stop the threat and, and use self-defense as a, as, a, uh, you know, as a reason to defend yourself, they have to have a couple of things. Number one's intent. They have to intend to hurt you. Okay, they have to intend to hurt you. So how do you, how do you, so, well, okay. Number two, they have to be capable of hurting you. Okay, they have to be able to hurt you. Okay, so in other words, if I see some, some guy who's about my size, and I feel he has the intent, so he's saying, I'm gonna kick your ass. I'm gonna hit that guy right away because I'm gonna take that at face value. If he's saying he's gonna kick my ass, I'm assuming he's going to, so I'm going to attack him first because he has the intent and the capability. He's ca capable, right? Now, if a 70-year-old lady came up and said, I'm going to kick your ass, even if she had the intent to, she wouldn't be capable of. So if I killed her over that or beat the shit out of her, I'm going to jail. You have to have the intent and you have to, have the, you have to be capable. I didn't know that. You have to be capable. That's why I have made it to 60 and never gone to prison, never gone to jail, never been to arrested because I know when not to, to attack and when to attack. I've been plenty of, of, of altercations and I've been plenty of close, close calls. But I've never once crossed the line to assault anyone or else I would have been in jail by now and I never have. Because there's a really fine line but I can usually define that line. Man.
What kind of questions do you have for Pitmaster? Any questions you want, ask them here. We will answer them. Self-defense scenario. Self-defense. Whether it's on technique, what technique you should use, or if you're legally able to, to uh, defend yourself over this or that, ask about any scenario you want. We will answer you on video. All right? Thanks for coming, guys.